3.41 in the morning. Hello everyone. I thought I'd show you the time because I could tell you it's any time because you don't see any windows. You have no sense of time when there are no windows. Nighttime working is, I like, because I can't get interrupted by phone calls, the email slowdown. I guess in return, what most people hate is they get a lot of emails from me in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, but when I have the, 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 the room to do it, like working at night is great for me. And I guess everyone's different. Uh, I normally like to go to the gym in the morning. And then I actually normally like getting a nap if I can in the day. Cause generally I probably don't get as much sleep as I should. So if I can get a little shut eye in the middle of the day, it actually powers me up to work through the night as I need to. And um, that is exactly what happened today. So I got up, I don't have any video today. I, today was a pretty busy day. So I didn't, I couldn't like really capture anything. And it's still quarantine, so I'm not like doing much outside of being in my apartment. So I that I apologize for. Uh, I did start at the gym today, um, and I actually have some uh, trusty little drink. This is a I use a, um, a plant-based protein powder because I am mostly vegan. I am not all vegan. I cheat vegetarian, but I haven't had meat. Oh goodness. I don't think I've had meat for three years now. I think it's been three official years since I last had meat. I think it's three years now. That's incredible. Um, uh, I have had fish, but no meat. But anyway, this is a plant-based protein powder. And the reason it's so green is I put spirulina in it. Although I think I put too much spirulina because I drink it. And I definitely taste spirulina. Um, <laughs> um, generally it's pretty tasteless, but it's, yeah, it's, it, anyway. Um, and um, I'm drinking my protein, make sure I get my protein intake, because I went to my main gym today, which is how I started off. Uh, my main gym, it was my first time I had been back, so I think for those who are just catching up, ever since I was able to start going back to the gym, I thought I'd start out in my own building, because it had been so long since I last went to the gym, I didn't want to just start lifting heavy weights, because. Um, I didn't want to hurt myself, so I kind of warmed myself up in my own gym, and it was actually quite safe. Generally, I was the only person in the gym at any given time, uh, and they actually wrote my building. They gotten 40 visitors a day over the course of the entire day, which is well, well, well below CDC guidelines, which is great. Um, I, at most, there were two other people once when I went in the daytime, but at night, there was never anyone in there. I was always the only one in there. I went to my real gym today, and for the most part, it was it was great. Um, it's a huge facility, so it's like one huge room, and it, it's almost like being outside, so that's one reason why I feel safer in this environment. I'm not like in any small rooms confined or anything like that. They've got fans and stuff moving and circulating air, and that's great. They definitely moved all the equipment so everyone was socially distanced and all that fun stuff. I did my lift, I did chest and biceps today, and it was generally a good lift until I started lifting. So what I mean by that is I started lifting, and y'all, it was the first time I have lost some, some, hmm, muscle. I was trying to do 225 pounds bench press, which for me, generally, I could do 225 without even thinking about how many I was doing. I don't even know what my max was number because I could do them, I mean, well into the 12, 15, I don't know. I could go in high numbers. I never even counted that. I could do, I think I may have gotten eight my first rep and then six, six, and then four, and then I had to lower the weight. So, y'all, this is gonna be a process. That was a lot, of, that was a lot to take. Um, but I will, I will um, be strong, I will persevere, and I will get my mass back. So because of that, I'm actually eating a little bit more food um, to allow my body to gain the, the mass that I can, and I'm gonna drink my protein. Now as far as biceps, um, the biceps were okay, but they were also really low too. Like the numbers I used to be able to do, it just, it just, wasn't there. I didn't notice this so much in the gym in my building because I don't, again, I was just warming up and I was never really do, doing max, but I really noticed it with that. So anyway, uh, I want to talk a little bit about masks though. So I, I the, the Philadelphia Orchestra concert that I played on last Thursday night, they actually gave us these masks, which are which are nice. And um, let me see, 
They actually work really well. Now, what's 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 neat about this mask is it's really, really actually really pleasant on the ears. Not much pull. Um, Someone's saying my other mask was really be too small. Um, it can get a little hot. This mask. Um, but it has the nice Philadelphia Orchestra logo, so you, you, I mean, who, who wouldn't want that? So that, that's, that was nice. The mask I've been using at the gym is this one. Um, it's an Adidas. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I mean, I've got like 13 followers, so <laughs> I don't think Adidas cares. Um, uh, yeah, and it's got like reinforced lining here, so it's not just thin. It's got reinforced lining. And um, it's actually breathable. Um, and when I say breathable, it's not like I can breathe through it, but it actually, it doesn't like let the air sit on the face. So um, um, uh, it, it, it is filtered. How much? I don't know. And actually, I'm actually waiting on getting some new masks that will help when I'm at the gym. Uh, but the thing about this is when I put this on, the the things that go, over the, the wraps that go over the ear, they're so kind of tight that they pull on my ear and actually give me a headache. Now, I think I'm getting more and more used to it, but that's kind of no fun. When I first started at the gym with the mask, I thought the mask was kind of a problem, like with breathing, but honestly, it was because I was out of shape. <laughs> I've gotten used to it, it has gotten better. It is harder to breathe through it, of course, but I think with time, I've gotten used to that and that's been less of an issue. Um, yeah, much less of an issue. So that's my mask thing. So if anyone can, maybe I just need smaller masks so it doesn't hurt my ears so much. So that's that's the mask question. But hey, oh, so the reason I brought up masks is because like, y'all, this is not wearing a mask. Like, this is not, it's like, what? Well, it's like, maybe if you have a food problem and you eat too much food, get, look, that's, mm, mm, no, that, mm, no, that won't work. So. But otherwise, that's all it's doing. If it's not covering your nose, it's not a mask. It's like a, a mouth restraint, or a, what's it called, a, a muzzle. Uh, maybe people want to put that on me in meetings that I go to. Finally, there were not that many people in the gym, so actually I always felt pretty good. But every once in a while, like even some younger, like a, almost like a trainer guy, I don't think he was a trainer, he looked like a trainer guy, was wearing what the mask was. I just don't get it, y'all. I just, it's a, you just put it, cover up. That's the whole point. Like, just, that's the whole point. It's gonna be a journey, y'all, getting my my weight back and getting my strength back to what it was. But I am, I'm determined to make that happen. Tomorrow's deadlifts, which is actually a Joe Connor specialty, and we'll see how that goes. Um, I came back, I showered, and within like 15 minutes, I was in front of this very camera doing a session for a foundation um, on portfolio careers, which is a lot of fun. The way I described it is, it's just, uh, it's a few things, a few different directions you can go. But one is, like, if you invest your money, you wanna invest your money so you, it has a, it's, you're diversified in your portfolio. You wanna have a lot of kind of, um, tricks in your bag, like lots of different things. So if something goes south, or something goes bad financially, you can kind of hold yourself together. Musicians aren't taught to be trained to do that. And the industry as it has been sets you up so that's all you do is play your instrument. They aren't preparing you to learn how to even write or speak English. You don't, because you don't actually to win a job or to play, play as a soloist, you don't have to be able to speak English, you just have to be able to read music and play the, play the notes on the page. So musicians aren't taught to do all these different things, but learning these different skills when you're in school, and if you're a young musician, learn to do different things. Learn, take other classes. For goodness sake, just even if out of your discipline, if you play the bass, go to a vocal master class. Don't say, oh, I don't sing. You're a musician, you should learn about the art of making music from a different perspective that could actually help you. So, and that's one way you can diversify your portfolio in that way, but other skill sets and finding what your, your passions are. So that was one, one way that I was talking about in, in finance, you wanna diversify your portfolio. In nature, probably the most um, resilient of all creatures can live in a diverse environment and can like eat and live off of diverse things. Because if they live in one environment and only eat one thing, once that thing goes, 
they're done. Uh, and so it actually exists in nature. So what does that look like as a musician? Well, for me, and it, this is very complex, is this is not a one size fits all. So I'll just talk about this from my perspective. For me, it's about, it really is about finding what your passion is, finding what your purpose is. The industry will tell you, and I'll say this again, I said this in the session, the industry will tell you what success is. The industry will say success is when you do this, this, and this. And if you don't do those things, um, not only are you not successful, but the industry might even call you a failure. And you might feel this pressure from your friends and from your teachers and from your institution that you have failed. But you, you may have failed on their standard, but you didn't fail on a life standard. Because if you have found the thing that is your purpose um, uh, and then your, is your passion, and those things can drive you and kind of move you in a, in a positive way uh, and honestly fuel you, particularly when in times when the music may not be your friend. And what I mean by that is sometimes, I mean, y'all, I've played the bass for a long time. There are some days where I get so frustrated um, there's some days where going to work is hard. And I say going to work and that's playing my instrument in order sometimes it's going to work is hard. So if I don't have something that kind of fuels me in another way, it could really start to eat at me. And that kind of goes to that whole diversification. So for me, using music as a tool to help young people is something that fuels me. That's a passion of mine. And Honestly, working with young people and seeing how they make their progress and how their life can be changed by music, that gives me energy and that inspires me to continue to want to help them and want to get better. And honestly, to me, this helps the whole of my musicianship because it's not just about me getting better so I can play a performance. It's about me getting better so I can help more people which is so awesome. I love that. Yeah, just getting better so I can help more people and be a, um, a positive influence for as many people as possible. So that was, that was a great session today. Um, and then after that, what did I do? Oh, I, oh, the Youth Advocacy Council. The Youth Advocacy Council is a governing body made up of students, some in high school and some are in college, but these students mostly have all gone through our program. They advocate for Project for 40, but they also advocate for music education here in the school district in Philadelphia. They learn board governance. We actually give them a, a budget of money to work with so they can grow the work that they do. They do some really exciting things and today was their first meeting and it was just really, really great to see them all um, making change. And again, that's one of the projects of Project for 40. Again, we're a music organization that doesn't teach music. So anyway, that's just, that, that happened. Um, and then I took a nap, that's where I got my nap, and then I got some practice in. I'm working on some fun projects, y'all. I hope I can like record them and just release them one day, because that'll be kind of fun, and then talk about the process later. Um, got some practice, and then I did emails, and I did emails, and I did emails, ate a big meal, did emails. The orchestra is making a big announcement about our season and what it's gonna look like, and we don't even know what those details are. Uh, I'm sure they'll all be very socially distant, and I know we can't have concerts, in a time like a pandemic, and I may have touched on this before and I'll end on this note. And it, having this portfolio career, having these different options really helps because for those who may have been, had a broader sense of what the possibilities are, of what they could be doing, uh, I know a lot of those musicians are still really busy. Um, they may not be making quite the income, but they are able to use the platforms that they set up to help with their income and help with the, the music they were, they, they were able to present. It's hard, it's, I mean, we, 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 we're musicians, we play concerts for people. And in the age of COVID, we, aren't, we haven't been allowed to do that. So we have, have had to be very creative in what we do. And it's been neat seeing some of the projects out there um, of what folks have been doing. And, that all goes to having that kind of entrepreneurial mindset uh, and how helpful that can be um, for being a musician. Y'all, it's, it's more than just notes. It really is. And I love the notes dearly. Those notes speak to me. Uh, they speak to my soul. Brahms is my favorite composer. I mean, they're, 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 they're some, it like, like someone like rips my soul out, like, and hang, hangs it and like just, 
just like just rings it until there's nothing left and then throw literally that's the way it feels when with music for me um but just like i say technique is not the end it's a means to an end i feel like the music is not the end either i think the music is a means to an end and that end is different for everyone but i think it's a positive place and it makes the world ultimately better for everyone so those are my closing thoughts to you um, on a Monday night or Tuesday morning, however you want to look at, at 4.01 a.m. Everyone have a great day. Let me know. Tell me your thoughts. Put, it, put that in the, in, the, in the comments. What are your thoughts about what it means to have a portfolio career and if that's necessary or is this some hogwash that schools are telling you? to do so you they can give you more stuff to do or maybe you just want to focus on just playing your instrument all the time and that's all you're going to do maybe that's you want to make that argument i'd love to hear it i'm sure there'll be quite colorful discussion in the comments below